Good day, everyone. I'm Arben Enriquez, your subject teacher in general mathematics. With this video lesson, we're going to discuss the topic representations of exponential functions under your general mathematics from quarter one, module 19. Our lesson objectives at the end of this video lesson, you are expected to first define the exponential function second demonstrate how to represent exponential function using table of values crops and equations so in the case of the exponential function the values of f of x curves rapidly on a given value of x yes it is because your x is your independent variable and when your x increases, it's automatic that the value of your f of x also increases. And or, if your x decreases, it's automatic that your f of x or your y decreases. So this is the characteristics of an exponential functions. That's why we use exponential functions to represent situations wherein there is a growth or decay that differentiates no, it from other functions. So exponential function can be described using the form of f of x is equal to b raised to x where b is a constant. So what will be the value now of your b? So your b should be greater than 0 and not equal to 1. So that b now is called the base while your x is the variable power or simply the exponent of your base meaning to say once you're dealing with your exponential functions there are two variables involved then your b or your base is a constant meaning to say it's a, it is a number that is greater than zero and not equal to one that has an exponent of variable x now let us study the different behaviors of the graphs of exponential functions relative to its independent and dependent variable. So that will be your x and y variables. So look at the function f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. Here is the input and f of x are the output, meaning say, that your x is your independent variable so whatever we input as a value of your x here it will affect no the value of your f of x then the f of x or the values of f of x are the output or the resulting value once we input a value or values in your variable x consider the values in the following table no to be presented for the next slide so substitute the values of x to the function to get f of x so there's a set of uh, x values here that we're going to substitute no as a value of your x for us to get the value of your f of x or simply your y then we're going to plot these uh, x and y uh, variables no or coordinates of a point to a cartesian plane for us to see the behaviors of the graphs of these exponential functions being involved on in this scenario so here is your table too so your first row represent your x values and your second row represent your f of x now in this case now once we input no these values to a given functions and this will serve as your resulting values which is your f of x so these values under your first row will serve as your independent values and your uh, second row or the values that you can see you now on the second row represent the dependent values you no know? so whatever we input you no know? it could be a one-to-one -one relationship for these values you no know? that once we input the value of x we can provide a value of f of x that we can map on the values that we input as a value of your x now looking at the table you can observe that 
as x increases by one unit f of x doubles its value from its previous value yes no if if your x uh, value increases one unit so it doubles so one multiplied by two it's two so there's an increase of one unit again from one to two then two multiplied by two it becomes four meaning to say there is an uh, one unit increase in your x value and it doubles your f of x to show how rapidly f of x changes a graph of the function shown in the figure one below so here is the graph that will represent your values on your table number two so in your figure number one you can see how steep the curve moves upward from its initial value this nature of the function has x values that are real numbers for example why is it we consider that your x values are real numbers your x na values are elements of all real numbers because it starts from negative infinity to your positive infinity here so from negative infinity to positive infinity including zero that will be the value of your x or the values that you can input no as a value of your x based on this uh, graph no so here the y intercept of one is one yes it is why because if your x is zero you're looking for your y intercept we always assume that your x is equal to zero when your x is zero your f of x is equal to one so it's automatic that the value that we get now once we input your zero as a value of your x then that will be the value of your y intercept now if your y intercept is one it's automatic that we assume or conclude that your x is equal to zero that we can map on this y is equal to one so at x is less than zero the axis becomes the asymptote so as you can see on this part no at some point your graph here no at some point for example if this is your x axis and this is your graph at some point here no if you magnify this one at some point here or here no your your x axis will be parallel to your graph meaning to say that your x-axis will serve as the asymptote or a guide no in your curve when we say asymptote it is an imaginary line that will serve as a guide to your curve but there is no point of intersection between your graph and your asymptote so since here we conclude that your x-axis is your asymptote meaning to say that there is no point of intersection between your graph and your x-axis or your graph will never uh, pass through no your x act your x-axis so on the other hand y values or x or f of x contains only positive integers yes it is no because this will be your positive y no if your domain or your x value will start from negative infinity and to positive infinity because we the, that x is the element of all real numbers but again in your domain or in your y this is only a these are positive numbers so we can map a, a positive numbers only only a positive numbers no as a value of your y or f of x here so moreover you can observe that the constant 2 is greater than 1 yes it is no and it's not equal to 0 yes if this is the case where b is greater than 1 and not equal to 1 you will have what we call exponential growth it is an increasing function yes it is no it is an increasing function in a way that we there is an increase no in your x value it's automatic that the value of your f of x or your y also increases so by simply assessing the values here no 
in this table number two, you can conclude, no, without graphing, no, without without graphing or without plotting those uh, points, no, or coordinates, no, we can conclude that this is an increasing function in a way that there is an increase in your x and it's automatic that there is an increase in your f of x values or y values. So in your figure number two, now look at the function f of x. So it's equal to one up x. Here, zero less than b less than one, where b is equal to one half. So still that we need to consider that your b should be greater than zero and not equal to one. So still one half is greater than zero and not equal to one. You may notice that this function is also the same as f of x is equal to 2 raised to negative x. Yes, it is. No, it is the same. Observe the graph of the function on the left. Why is it the same? Because your negative exponent here represent that, you, that your 2 here will be on your denominator once we are asked to convert this one to a fraction. So your negative exponent will uh, tell you that your base is in the denominator. So the, the curve moves stiffly downward, going to the right, but not touching the x-axis, no? It's the same thing with your f, f of x is equal to 1 of x, no? Wherein that your 2 is negative x, no? The behavior of your graph, no? Downward, meaning to say, but it will never touch your x-axis because your x-axis, again, will serve as your asymptote, no? Still, the x inputs are real numbers. Yes, it is, no? That your that your x value will start again, no? From your negative infinity to positive infinity. But again, no? Your x or your f of x or your y values here are only positive numbers. Because your graph will never pass through your, uh, your x axis. Meaning to say, there is no point of intersection between your graph and your x-axis. It's automatic that all your domain, no, or your y values are positive values only. So, if this is the case, where 0 b less than b less than 1, you will have what we call exponential decay. So, that's what we call exponential decay. It is a decreasing function. Yes, it is, no? Because if your x, uh, no, as you can see here, if this is the movement of your of your graph, no, when your x increases, even your x increases, no, when your x increases from negative to positive value of x, when your x increases, increases, I mean, no, then your y decreases. So, this will represent an exponential decay. And it is a decreasing function. Variations of graphs may be tried relative to functions y is equal to 2x raised to 2x and y is equal to 2 raised to negative x. So, that's how we graph no, your relative functions. So for example number one, Jose is planning to buy a gift worth 500 pesos for his mom's birthday. So he planned to save money from what remains on his daily allowance. On the first day, he was able to save 5 pesos. Each day, he decided to double his previous savings. As what day can he be able to buy the gift? So based on his uh, savings, no, for his mom's birthday, no, and he needs a 500 pesos for him to buy uh, a gift, no, for his mom. So here, as you can see on the table, it shows the pattern how Jose saves his money. So in your day one, she saved five pesos. In day two, 
she decided to double it. So whatever his savings on the first day, he doubled it. So it becomes 10 no? in the second day. And it was being doubled in the third day. So it becomes 20 as you can see here. And for the fourth day, it becomes 40, 80, 160, 320, 640 up to the last day, which is your eighth day. No. As you can see here, once we flat this one, no, as we flat this one, that your number of days here will represent no? it will represent your x values and your the number of savings will represent your y values. So if we use a Cartesian plane or any graphing materials, no, we can uh, visualize you know, the behavior of the graphs that will represent the number of days and savings of Jose for his mom's birthday. Now as you can see, no, your graph, graph's behavior, no, if your x increases, it's automatic that your y also increases. So meaning to say it represents an exponential growth or an, an increasing function. Now, Jose can buy the gift for her mother, mother's birthday, on the nth day. Because our, we're going, our goal is to save 500 pesos. We cannot meet that 500 pesos on the seventh day because it's all, only 320. So we can meet no, your 500 pesos on the eighth day. So we just simply use your tables and values and graphs no, for us to visualize when we can meet. No? The amount, the targeted amount of Jose for his mom's birthday. So the answer is on the eighth day of his savings period. So for example, number two, Mang Leonardo bought his son a motorcycle worth 125,000 pesos, but father and son plan to sell the same motorcycle about after five years so the value of the motorcycle depreciates at five percent per annum so it's automatic that once you buy something works at the, at the present no after how many months how how after many years no if you decided to sell it the value of this uh, thing or materials will depreciate no how much would be the value of the motorcycle after three years. So our goal now is to find the value of the motorcycle after three years. To solve this problem, use the function a of t of t is equal to p multiplied by one minus r raised to t where your r is the interest of rate or rate of interest I mean your t is your time no in terms of years. So take note that instead of addition, we use the subtraction in 1 minus r. Again, if p is the initial amount, r is the rate of interest, and t is the time. So substituting the values we get, so a of t now, or the, the function with respect to your amount, no? with respect to your time, is equal to 125,000, 1 minus 0.5 raised to 3 because it's 3 years. Now, why is that 1 minus r? Our goal now here is to make sure that there is no negative values. If the interest of rate is uh, if the interest of rate is more than 1, then it's r minus 1. But in this case, no, since 1 is greater than or it's more than no to the the rate of interest being mentioned on this problem, then we use 1 minus r for us not to have any negative values for this amount. No? So the table of values for 3 years is shown below. So your table number 4 here, where your first row is your t or your time, and your second row is your amount with respect to your time. No? What will be the value? If your t is 0, it's automatic that will start once you buy something, no? Still, there's no depreciation of that. When you buy it at the present and you decided to sell it at the present, no? Then there is no depreciation. 
So that's why if your T is zero, it's automatic that the amount is the same amount, no? Or worth of uh, on how you buy this uh, motorcycle. That's why it's if your T is zero, it's automatic that the amount is also one hundred twenty-five thousand. But once you after one year, no, it is one hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred fifty. So more or less, uh, there is a decrease, no, in the amount of six thousand plus, no. So once you move forward to the sec uh, the second year, still there is a six thousand plus depreciation after the last year, which is three. Now, how can we grab, no? As you can see, when your T, no, uh, increases, it's automatic that your the amount with respect to t now decreases meaning say that this uh, situation represent an exponential decay it is a decreasing functions wherein if your t in, uh, increases and once we map this one to the values that we can get on for the amount no when your a decreases then it is a decreasing function so for us to more uh, to visualize more this one, we need to grab no. We simply use Cartesian plane for us to visualize what will be the value of this one. As you can see, no, the graph moves uh, downward no. If you start from here, going to your tree here, then it becomes so the the movement no the movement of this graph from upward to downward when you say it is a decreasing function is it shows that when your t increases your a with respect to t it's automatic decreases because it is a decreasing function so the motorcycle has depreciated to an amount of 107,171.88 pesos so that will be the amount of motorcycle after three years if Mang Leonardi decided to sell it. So for your activity, so find the values of the exponential function f of x when x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Identify whether it is a growth or decay. So by simply using your Cartesian play, you can graph, you can visualize if this function is an exponential growth or decay it depends when your x increases it's automatic that your y also increases that's automatic and increasing uh, function when once your x increases and your y decreases no it's an increasing function or an exponential decay so that's how we see you no know, the behavior or that's how we assess you no know, the behaviors of the given exponential uh, functions so you're going to put your answers and solutions in your blue Katleya. Thanks for watching. So please do like and comment and subscribe.